Hey enthusiastic introduction, Nick here with my first ever full build video today. I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a 4 inch twig mutant racer. And the general build instructions for this apply to pretty much any 3S, 4S, even ultralight 6S build. 3 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch quad. So, so you can use these same steps to build many, many different kinds of quads. But I'm going to be building this Twig 4 inch Mutant with the Beta FPV 2004 motors. There are also some other great 2004 motors out there, so feel free to use any that are in the similar KV range. And if you're wanting an in depth breakdown of the quad and why I chose each of those parts, check this link right here. I already went over all that. And because this is going to be a longer video, I'm just going to get right into the build. And here we go. First step here is to prep our flight controller. I'm going to give a little extra space on my XT30 cable. It comes with an XT60, but I'm using an XT30 because I'm only using uh, 4S batteries, so I thought that should be fine. I'm um, getting a little flux on the battery pads of the flight controller here to prep for soldering, pre-tinning the wires. And then uh, I just popped those wires through, got some nice solder on there and we are good to go on the battery lead. There you go. Cleaning off a little bit of sticky tack here. Now I'm, now I'm uh, getting some flux on the capacitor uh, here. And one thing I forgot to do was put heat shrink on the capacitor wire. So, so important thing is just getting some uh, heat shrink on the capacitor to prevent any shorts. Um, instead of doing that, in this case, I just put some, uh, some electrical tape on the capacitor, but you want to have the capacitor bent off to the side, and you'll see why later. Just because of the frame and the canopy we're using, it helps to get it bent to the side. There's my electrical tape on the capacitor. Next step is to pre-tin all the uh, all the solder points we're going to be hitting on the flight controller and it's only really a few here in addition to the uh, motor pads. So here's one example of soldering up motor pads. You want to solder up all 12 pre-tin, excuse me, all 12 of those. And then these are the four pads you're going to pre-tin for your crossfire receiver. And other than that and the motor pads, those that should be the only soldering of the flight controller that we'll be doing because this comes with the DJI plug and play adapter. And the last motor pad there, there's an image for you if you want to see how that looks. Now, adding the crossfire, I'm basically going to measure each wire to make it as short as possible just to keep the build nice and clean. I'm going to pre-tin each of these wires. And here's where all the go. And I already uh, pre-tinned the crossfire uh, I didn't show you that shot, but it's the same as all the other solder pads. And that is basically your wiring setup. And here's where each of them go. Going to get the ground wire in first, in the 5 volt. It goes next. And then our RX and TX. And then while that's done, before moving on to anything else, I want to just make sure Crossfire can be bound up. And I plug, plug in a LiPo, open up my, uh, turn on my radio, and click on the bind. And you'll see a bind, it'll say update receiver, say yes, I'm fast forwarding through this, but it'll update the receiver firmware from the radio. So. Basically, good news, we're all bound up. See the green light, solid green, and that's that. Um, now I'm going to put on the included heat shrink onto the crossfire receiver. 
slide that over. Just like that. And I'm just gonna clip a little notch for the bind button if I ever need to access that more easily in the future. This is totally optional. And heat up that heat shrink, careful to keep that flame away from, you know, as far away from the flight controller as possible. But um, you can use the heat gun if you wanna do it the right way, but I don't have a heat gun, so. Now installing the Vista, I'm gonna uh, add some flux and pre-tin all of our pads. I think two, the five volt and ground came already pre-tinned, so I'm just uh, pre-tinning the other three pads here. And here's the diagram it came with, just to show you all the wiring. And there's how it looks all wired up. And this is using, again, the included connector. And then that just plugs right into the flight controller. So that's the easiest step of this whole process. Now I'm going to attach the antenna temporarily just to set up the Vista. Um, as you saw, I unscrewed a little uh, protector for the antenna, popped the antenna on, plugged it in the battery, and now I'm pushing the bind button on the Vista and then pushing the bind button on my goggles. And you should hear the beeping stop once it's bound. And now I'm putting in the little uh, <clears throat> soft mounting for the flight controller. A little bit of a pain, but... And here's my frame all set up. I use the included uh, gel pad, put in my battery strap at the bottom, and then I pop in some 12 mil M2 screws on uh, not the largest holes, but the ones right, right inside those for our whoop style flight controller. So getting these all set up to drop our flight controller on. That's how that looks, ready to go. And you wanna line it up. So the uh, capacitor and battery lead are on the back of the quad, which is this, where it has the straight brace, not the curved brace. Here's how it looks all mounted. And next, motor's pretty self-explanatory. Um, one bonus here is I'm using my custom design carbon fiber uh, motor protection and link to that down below if you wanna get that cut at CNC Madness. So once all the motors are mounted, I'm just gonna cut them to give myself a little extra length and um, solder each of them up to the motor pads. Get them all pre-tinned. Um, and then this is another optional thing. I got this nice uh, mesh cover to cover up the motor wires, more for style purposes, um, but it also cleans up the build a little bit. And I'm putting a little heat shrink on each end of the mesh cover to clean up the frayed edges of the mesh. Again, this is all optional, but just for looks. And you wanna make sure that mesh cover does not touch the motor. And then here's soldering, uh, soldering the motors, motor wires on there. And the order of the wires doesn't actually matter on the pads. Um, we will adjust for that in beta flight later. Here I'm heating up the heat shrink, tighten that up around the mesh. There's one example, making sure it's not touching the motors. And I'm zip tying down the wires here. Got some nice blue zip ties. So there's basically one finished arm there. And here's four finished arms. Bill is starting to look a little more reasonable. And now we're getting ready for the canopy mount. Um, you're gonna use, these are M3 screws and bolts. These go uh, on, the, on the very outer holes around the flight controller. Now for the canopy, I'm unscrewing the antenna and then putting it back on once it's fed through the canopy. And then you wanna make sure the Vista USB-C port matches up with 
the hole uh, in the canopy. Uh, here I'm taking out the Vista camera. You want to make sure that arrow is pointing up. Pop that in there. And then use the included, included canopy screws. There's two screws um, that screw right into the TPU canopy. And this is a really thick protective canopy. Um, now this is a canopy that if you want to be closer to the 250 or sub 250 you can use the beta fpv canopy that i'll link down below it's a lot lighter but you're going to get a little less protection um but i i prefer the twig canopy here because it's really beefy here's screwing in the camera you can see the camera angle is very adjustable with this canopy and plugging back in our dji camera there and then for this step, I'm trying to weave and pull through the crossfire antenna through these top holes on the canopy, screwing in the M3 screws that were included. And I'm removing this rear screw because it actually required a longer M3 screw that I had to provide myself for that rear mount. And here we go, zip tying uh, the antenna, the, the video antenna to the back with the included hole on the canopy, adding some zip ties for our crossfire antenna here just to uh, shrink wrap it. Here's the shrink tube fitting on there nicely and add some heat. And then here's uh, here's my favorite battery. This is an 850 4S, and I'm kind of just testing out how how it fits with the battery lead, and then I'm going to zip tie the battery lead in place so that does not get pulled out in the future. And there's the USB-C plugs right into the Vista. And whenever you're having that plugged in, make sure to have a fan on the unit because it will overheat. Uh, and I'm using the DJI Assistant software to update the Cadex Vista firmware. And that does take a little while, maybe like 10 minutes or so. Fast forward through that. There we go. Updating. Okay, so we're going to jump into Betaflight here. You may see a thing that says calibrate accelerometer. So just get your quad in a flat place and then click on that. That'll be your first step. First thing I like to do is just check motor direction, making sure the motors are all spinning correctly. So for that, we were first gonna check, go into our config tab. I'm gonna switch this to props out and save and reboot. And then making sure your props are off, plug in a LiPo. So you have to check this, I understand. Let's check motor number one, looks good. Motor two, looks good. Motor three, okay, motor three is not going the right way. Motor four, okay, three and four need to be reversed. So untick that, disconnect. Now go into BL. Heli, there we go, BL Heli Suite 32. Connect, and then read setup. So first thing, you'll see this uh, little window pop up. Make sure this says 32.7 here or above. That'll allow us in a later step to enable RPM filtering. So this all looks good. So I said motors four and three. So let's untick all of them, but number three, Reversed, right, motor four, same thing, reverse, right, okay, <clears throat> beta flight, check that our motor rotation match all these, so again, we'll do four, three, good, four, perfect, all right, and for the rest of the and for the rest of the beta flight settings, uh, you want to make sure your second UART here is enabled. This is our VTX. You want to make sure your serial RX on UART3 is enabled. Save and reboot. 
in config, make sure enable motor stop, enable bidirectional D shot, um, set this to 14. And I think most of this is as it came. I'm using crossfire, so serial base receiver, CRSF here. And I believe that's all standard, nothing here. PID tuning, so um, I'm not great at PID tuning, but this is basically where I ended up with the sliders. Um, if anyone has a better PID tune, please drop it in the comments below. And then, and then onto the filter settings. Only thing I changed here, I turned down the filtering to 1.3. Uh, motors still came back nice and cool, so so this felt like a good spot. Um, nothing different here. These are these are pretty normal switches. So set my arm to aux one, flight modes to aux three, beeper to aux two, and this just depends on what radio you're using. So if you have your receiver plugged in, you can flip your switches, and you'll know which switch is which. Then from here you can pick which switch you want each thing to be. Um, OSD, uh, I have a very, very basic OSD, just battery voltage here. And um, that should be it. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and also check the description of this video for any updates as I continue flying this thing if I have any changes. All right guys, bye.